Thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for being with me this morning for this informal forum. And I scheduled this because um, as I continue to grow, we continue to grow. And, and our, our team, if, not, if we're not the fastest growing team in CTFO, we're in the top two or three. But I, I'm quite sure we're, we're pulling ahead of the pack. And with that comes a lot of numbers that are attached to a lot of associates, and I don't want you to get lost in the mix. So when people are reaching out to me, especially by email in response to my emails, sometimes I feel like I'm not able to serve you to the greatest degree or uh, on the personal level I want to. So I created this space so that you could get to know me and I could get to know you and I could get you over the hump on anything that's important to you to help set you free to get your big win here at CTFO. So thank you for joining us. And Todd, let's go ahead and kick off. Absolutely, Janet. And I, I truly appreciate your time because you could be doing anything, but as a leader, you just really uh, set the bar for us. So let me just kick it off here. Uh, we've all heard about your accolades in the industry and, and know what you are here to the CTFO family. But I'm curious to know and, and tell our listeners today, um, can you tell us about your beginnings and how did you get started with uh, network marketing? You know, what is your, what did you plant your flag in the industry? Uh, well, wouldn't you know, a, a boy introduced me <laughs> to network marketing because I probably back then wouldn't have been so receptive to a girl, but a cute boy uh, talked me into um, actually um, going in on a co-loan with an elderly woman who owned an Herbalife distributorship. And my agreement with this elderly woman, and this is back in the early 1990s, was that I was going to lend her a, a pretty significant amount of money uh, and that she was going to rob Peter to pay Paul. This was just kind of a give and take for just a few tie overs, for a tie over for just a few days, no more than a few weeks. And after months had passed and this wonderful, I'm sure well intending um, elderly woman couldn't pay me back, I had to kind of pose that question and say, hey, a lot of time has lapsed. Um, we're running close to April, which is tax time. I'm going to have to be writing a big check, and I was counting on getting that money back. What can I do to get repayment? And she says, well, my Herbalife distributorship is, is floundering. I'm, I'm not able to do the same kind of business I used to do. So if you would come to my home and help me be successful and reignite my business, get me back to where I was, I could pay you back. And I thought, oh, my gosh, like, like so many other people. I, I had a bad feeling about network marketing. Certainly Herbalife had a real stigma attached to it, <clears throat> but I was really attached to getting my money back. So I said, listen, here's the deal. I work retail in a men's boutique in, in central Phoenix, one of the finest in the country. When I finish up work in the evening, I'll come to your home in Glendale and I'll help you help yourself. And then you can pay me back. And, but I made her pinky swear she wouldn't tell anybody that I was involved in Herbalife. And that's kind of like I had so much embarrassment uh, and shame and humiliation with having to get so low to go into something like that, that I made her swear that she wouldn't let my name circulate. But in just three months time working side by side with this shrewd network marketer, I really gained respect for her ability to serve and lead her unbelievable work ethic, how creative she was, how relentless and tenacious. And I found that working side by side with her, I had a lot of those traits myself. And uh, rather than go to my retail store and make my, my store owners um, a lot of money, I had a chance to kind of embrace this model that I had wrongly judged and see how far I could run with it. And so I did in like three or four months, I had qualified for a cruise, Todd, on, Herbal, uh, on an, an Herbalife contest. And they flew me into Los Angeles to have dinner with Mark Hughes, who was the owner. And uh, I kind of got freaked out and coward when I sat with this guy and he had more makeup on than I did. I've never <laughs> experienced that before. Thought that was... <laughs> And then went into a room with other people who were already invited to this dinner and they were standing on chairs like it was the second coming of Christ when Mark walked in the room. And I thought to myself, I'm on to something. This network marketing thing, making money uh, for me, leveraging other people, um, uh, how I want, when I want, with the people I want to work with, I loved it all. I was drunk on network marketing, but I was sure I didn't want to be in that deal. And I thought I'd rather be... Um, waterboarded than be locked on a ship with all these herbal lifers. So I went into another network marketing program that I found online that was promoting a stress product. And the reason I was into that was because 
uh, I was told that my eating disorder that I had had since I modeled in my early 20s was largely um, uh, propelled by stress. So I thought, okay, I'll get a stress relieving product. It was an adaptogen, the first of its kind with the Von Feather family out of uh, Monterey, California. And I went in there and took those skills that I had just begun to uh, massage and went in there and got into a number two earning position underneath uh, Kathy Coover. And then she recruited me into a company in the Midwest. And uh, I went into a number one earning position with my former husband. Um, and then I got a chance to, to integrate my teenagers into our business model, to have each one of us play to our strength and work as a family unit and indivisible team till I decided to divide it. Uh, but that kind of is the, the genesis of my networking career, maybe more than you wanted to know, Todd, but that's how it all started. No, that's that's perfect. And um, what I, what I like to say, Janet, is like that's so you because I've I've known you for a long time, and the fact that you got in this industry, uh, because of your heartstrings, you know, you have a heart to help people, and I hope people just heard that story is because you're here because you had a heart to help somebody, and and that's just the way Janet Larson Meyer is, ladies and gentlemen. And I just wanted to let you know. Her story is genuine. And so uh, moving on there, Janet, a lot of people, they see you, they see this product, sort of the, the end product, but we all have a story. And I think um, the listeners on the line, sort of tell us what are some of your personal challenges and obstacles that you've had to overcome to get to this point, because I think that's very important for people to know. Mm. Okay. Um, I think my very biggest challenge, this is a good one. Uh, I have a lot of them. <laughs> I got more issues than strengths, just let's be clear. But I think my biggest challenge was to let go of the dream that some man was going to take care of me and make my way. I was raised in a very traditional family, and my father always told me that some man was going to sweep me off my feet, take good care of me, adore me, put me in a home with a white picket fence, and all I had to do was be a good uh, doting wife and life would be forever good for me. And it did not turn out to be my picture. So um, my children say, um, uh, my one daughter says, mom, you have a bad picker. And I say, you mean like picking my nose? Like, what are we talking about, Gwyneth? And she goes, no, like picking men, mom. So I, I think I did have a bad picker. I can't make it about men. I'm sure it takes two to tangle, right? But my personal um, my ability to put on a vest and pull my own cord and blow, my, blow myself up, it probably exceeds most anybody. I always say if we were to play Can You Top This over a glass of wine, I'm quite, quite sure I'd whip most of you. So my personal choices um, sabotaged me, not just personally but professionally. Um, my my uh, unwillingness to let go of that dream that a man was going to do it for me, to identify my value through a man telling me, um, I was beautiful, capable, or lovable. I lived for that. So I didn't live for validation from God. I didn't find it in myself. I searched for it for men. So that is my truth, and it didn't work out well for me. I was divorced three times, um, and each one of them came with unbelievable consequences, which maybe I should have foreseen, but I did not. So my whole life has truly been about overcoming, overcoming an eating disorder, overcoming bad uh, personal choices, um, overcoming uh, a learning disability that I have. Um, people think that this is a breeze for me. Well, it is kind of, but it took a, a, a lot of um, morphing into this role. I do have a, a learning disability. I was hitting him with a baseball bat when I was six. I don't learn as easily as other people. I have a hard time reading. But how I learned to overcome that here was there are several things on all fronts. I let go of the dream of a man doing it for me and I love the idea I'm doing it for myself with, with the help of other people for other people. Um, so that was a great, great challenge to be able to play to my strengths and let go of my weaknesses and recruit to my weaknesses was another big breakthrough in this industry. I was trained by someone who in a very insulting manner tried to squeeze everyone into her leadership box, how we should communicate, how our daily discipline should go, and it didn't fit me. So I broke out of her mole because she constricted me. She was requiring me to be different than who I am, and it was stifling. And I really had my breakthrough when I learned not to judge myself for my inadequacies and challenges and really focus on the things that I do great, greater than most people, and then find other people who had different talents and strengths 
and bring them together and we create this little nucleus of a team just like you todd and klaus and i have developed indivisible and unstoppable that was a huge breakthrough for me in network marketing so I, I just, when I divulge all these things to you, I want to break all of your myths that life is easy and good. It is good for me, but boy, I paid my dues at the door to get here. Absolutely. And um, I, I truly appreciate you being transparent and, and team. This lady, I can't tell you enough about her. And when she comes and tell you these things, you'll learn more about her as you uh, begin to know her throughout your CTFO career, which, you know, is a segue into CTFO. I know you, Janet, and I know your story, but I'd like for you to share it. You are already a believer in CBD prior to CTFO. So could you share with the uh, listeners today uh, what your passion for CBD is and how has the needle moved more so in your favor here with our opportunity at CTFO? Uh, that's a good one. So I had a long, very, very successful career in network marketing had a, um, a very a difficult um, wind down in one of my more recent ventures and side, it sat on the sidelines of network marketing um, for, for quite some time. And for a, a few different reasons, um, I wanted to test myself and see if I could put it out of the park in conventional business, which I did by bringing networking into a conventional business model. And I made Uber times more than anyone in this a similar role, but it was because I'd taken all those skills and the, the, the beautiful concept of helping more people by leveraging other people's time and talent, everybody playing to their strengths and letting go of their weaknesses. So I brought that into conventional business, proved to myself what I needed to. I could be in a clean, straight, predictable, conventional, hardline business, bring my um, unconventional methods to it and... Um, and excel. So I kind of got through that. But then again, Todd, it comes to the fact that um, I, I really have to sit with myself and I'm very honest with myself who I am and who I am not. Who I am is a rotten employee. My husband just said that to me last night. You make a lousy employee. I go, well, why do you say that? And he goes, you don't like people telling you what to do. You don't like people telling you how to show up. You don't like it when people don't like your ideas <laughs> and adopt it. And he's exactly right on all counts. That's what conventional medicine or conventional business does to you. It puts you in a box and doesn't allow you free expression and creativity. And I find it very stifling by just my very makeup. So I stepped out um, of, into, conventional med, into conventional business and it actually ended up partly being in naturopathic medicine. But um, I wanna segue back in here. Um, part of who I am is a 100% risk taker. I really, really, I'm a speed junkie. I went 170 on the back of my husband's Hayabusa, could hardly hold on, um, but I'm a speed junkie. I like fast cars fast sedus, fast motorcycles, and twice I rolled the dice and took a risk and went high speed uh, on a bike and had two incidences, not wipeout accidents, but uh, accidents, but one damaged my lower back and one damaged my knee, but especially the lower back injury, ladies and gentlemen, almost disabled me for four years. And that's just, this isn't like a lifetime ago where I'm reflecting. I'm talking about just before I came into CTFO. So I spent four years um, loathing life, wishing I were dead, making my husband hide his pistols in his nightstand. I couldn't pull up my own clothes. I couldn't step over the tub. My face would be washed with anguish. Why? Because I was miserable. I couldn't sit, stand, or even lay down and get pain relief. And I couldn't find my answer. Not through chiropractors, orthopedic surgeons, stretch therapists, physical therapists, laser therapists. I went through the whole gamut. And a, a person that I had had a business relationship called me and said, hey, I um, have had this incredible turnaround with CBD oil after um, a slow recovery on shoulder surgery. And it made me think of you, Janet, and how much I've watched you suffer. Um, uh, and I, I'd like you to consider trying this. So I'm like, I, I was all about it. I would do anything. And for those of you who are with me today who know what it's like to live with pain over time, I didn't care if this guy had horse pee in the bottle he sold me in the parking lot. I brought him cash and we did this little deal just like a drug deal. I didn't even know what I was doing. CBD meant nothing to me. I didn't research it or anything. This guy said it took him from intolerable pain to liberated. I was all about it. That very same day, I asked him to rendezvous with me, go to the dispensary, bring me what he had, and I'd pay him cash. And within just a couple days, maybe 72 hours, 
I went from about a nine, wishing I were dead, to about a three in my level of pain. And so it gave me, um, and not only, and, and I was promised that I would get pain relief. And now you, those of you who have been smarter than me and done some uh, research on this product understand how it is promoted and proven to be a, a strong pain and inflammation uh, reliever. That's all I was looking for. But when I had the, um, when I sat with myself and started using CBD over time, I got what I was looking for, right? I went from a nine to a three. I can, I can tolerate a three. I went from um, being um, so distressed I wished I wasn't alive to having peace and knowing that modern medicine would eventually give me my, my total miracle, which it did. Um, but I was peaceful and calm. Then I realized, oh my gosh, I'm thinking better. And remember, I have a, a learning disability, so this is a big one. I'm doing things right from start to finish for the first time. When I get stressed out, I can work through it and quiet myself with CBD without going to the pantry or freezer and eating away those emotions that would come up and take over me. You know, I used to think it was just like a pulley. Stress and anxiety would come up, and it's like a pulley would pull me to the freezer or the pantry. And I know there's a lot of girls on this webinar with me today who get what I mean, and you develop an addiction to sugar. It, it's as automatic as me waking up. And then the final benefit that I derived from CBD was that I slept like a baby. I had, in the days that I was working in conventional business, I had three instances where I fell asleep at the wheel. Why? Because I didn't sleep like a baby when I was a baby, but things, especially when I was dealing with pain, I would baby nap through the night. Twice I fell asleep when I was second position at an intersection and took my foot off the brake and hit the car in front of me. And one time in a front position, I ended up right in the middle of the intersection when I took my foot off the brake asleep. So um, those are a lot of benefits, pain and inflammation relief, helping correct and manage a learning disability that not only aggravates me, it really frustrates people around me, help me put to bed my addiction to sugar. Um, it, it's, um, you talk about a reason to not like yourself. When you can't control what you put in your pie hole, it really doesn't do much for your self-esteem. And we all know that sugar, large amounts of sugar over time are very bad for our health. And then to be able to sleep and let go and recover every day. So I was completely sold, Todd, on CBD way before CTFO. And my sponsor called me and told me about this company that was going to enter into an agreement with one of the world's largest organic CBD manufacturers in the world. And bing, he totally had my attention. I said no to every network marketing thing that was pitched to me. As a female top producer, you get bombarded with people soliciting you to join their organizations. But now somebody had my attention because he's talking to me about a product that had changed my life. And I thought I was the only one who knew about it. But uh, my sponsor talked to me about a dirty products versus clean. I didn't know that my product was clean. I thought it'd be just my luck to make that great health decision to start taking CBD, do a sublingual delivery right into my bloodstream and find out that I'm taking dirty stuff every day over the course of time. So when he made the case about pure organic, not treated with heat, non-GMO, good manufacturing practice standard or certification, I said, at a minimum, I'll be your customer, um, but let's talk about the business. So. Um, as you know, Todd, I, I asked those questions about the business that were important to me. How much does it cost to enroll for me? It was zero at the time. I said, what will it be for friends and family after launch? It was still zero. And you know that's true today, ladies and gentlemen. What kind of auto ship are you going to force on us every month? Well, no forced auto ship. And the cost of that will be $47. I thought, what? Industry average, I think, would be around 160. How about front-loading product? How much product are you going to make me front-load in order to get positioned to make money here? Nothing. Doesn't even make sense. Doesn't apply here. Nowhere uh, in our model, Janet. And then how many months of, of being inactive when life sometimes gets the best of us before you compress out and we make you nothing here in your company? And he says, never happens. So I said, let's go ahead and do this. Take, go ahead and let's enroll me. Why, ladies and gentlemen, I stood nothing to lose. Zero dollars invested, zero risk out of, out of on me. And I love this product. And I thought, you know what? In my God, in my God space, I thought this is the one. And it has proven to be. So today I hope I wake up that same, I get almost emotional about this, that I wake up that same passion in you, that you get it, that this is the one for you. And myself and Todd and Klaus and all, there's many other leaders on this forum with us today. We will do whatever it takes to contribute to 
your success as, as long as you're willing up to suit up and represent yourself fairly um, in the game here. Almost Absolutely, cried. Janet. I and you cried there, Todd. I almost cried. It's okay. It's okay, <laughs> sister. We like this. Um, I like your transparency, and so um, I hope that the team is getting this. And we have a question here, but I like to make a comment. You dropped so many nuggets in that little uh, segment there, but I like to say, ladies and gentlemen, when Janet said that she's headstrong and she didn't like anybody to tell her what to do, I'm living proof of that because <laughs> me and Janet talk all the time. And Janet's like, well, Todd, let me get your opinion on something. I'm like, okay, whatever I say, it's too much <laughs> trash. So I will, I will participate in this conversation. But, um, but she is a true winner. But I just want to say I, I love you and I appreciate your transparency. But we have a question here. Okay. Uh, we have a question from Damien. And Damien says, how do you build a successful network marketing business when you don't have a story? And I think that's a great question. And um. I can sort of piggyback on this, or do you want to go first, Jen, and then I can sure. piggyback? Sure. Well, I, I do think that um, first you borrow stories, Damien, um, and I certainly did that. Um, I did it every time I started at Ground Zero. Remember, I've been in and out of a few programs. I've had a lot of success, but I always start at Ground Zero like everybody else does. So you borrow the stories of your upline until you have your own story. But you, you absolutely must be a product of the product. Even if it doesn't rock your world like it did me, um, still you have to know that when you learn about the benefits of CBD oil and it's bringing your body to homeostasis, if you don't have the physical challenges that I had or the, um, the, uh, the challenges that I had that diminished my quality of life, um, still you know that your body is benefiting every part of um, you know the endocannabinoid system which affects almost everything is being bathed the cells of your body are being bathed with cbd they're exactly what they're craving to reach homeostasis optimization perfect balance so you need to be a product of the product and you could say to someone it didn't rock my world i really didn't have challenges to speak of i take it because i know the benefits that it gives my body but how you gather stories, Damien, is you get on these Wednesday webinars with us where I bring people on that talk about the, the benefits that CBD has brought to them, how it's been a game changer in their life. Remember Carrie, uh, or Perry, I'm sorry, uh, that we had on just a couple weeks ago talking about the woman who had the anxiety attack in her car. Remember Maria talking about her son who uh, overcame um, some learning challenges and is mainstreamed in school or I think it was Kelly who was talking about her depression and anxiety, and then her friend Angela, whose mother uh, uh, was functional with RA. Like, I could pull stories out. How about Dr. Rick Sloan talking about how this has been more effective for his uh, addiction patients than anything he's found in medicine? So, Damien, my point is, hang in there with us. Plug in, uh, share our stories and uh, with the person in front of you, but find relatable stories. Um, don't talk to um, a mom with two kids about uh, a story of an addict recovering. You could talk about Maria's story about a child in school. Um, try to make your stories relatable, but how you build up that whole storybook of testimonials is being plugged in. Absolutely, and um, and you sort of took my answer. I was going to say, sorry, Todd. Um, you know, it's okay. That's why I let you go first, <laughs> but. Uh, if I had to pick, <clears throat> excuse me, um, if I had to piggyback off of that, um, I think what I would say, Janet, is taking the focus off of us. And I've got a little story here I would tell. I think it's appropriate. Um, when I planted my flag here in the ne uh, network marketing industry, I remember one time I was doing a meeting, and you remember what PBRs were, Janet, private business receptions. You would do them in people's homes and things mm -hmm. that nature, hotels. Well, I remember one vividly. Uh, I was excited. I had to do one in Ridgeway, Virginia, which is about, you know, 35 minutes from here. And I knew that it was a pretty big meeting that night because of the responses that we had got to RSVPs. Well, make a long story short, Janet, I was getting prepared for the meeting. I was ironing my pants for my suit and everything. I took off, got all my materials in the car, took off, went to my aunt's house, was setting up about 15 minutes before the meeting. I was putting my clothes on and I realized that I had forgot my pants at home. And I was like, okay, what am I do now? Because I got a room full of guests downstairs. I can't go home and get my pants. And so what I did was I went down. I had on 
I had on my um, suit jacket, my shirt tie, but I had on athletic pants and sneakers. <laughs> and what At I least told you everyone, had some pants on. The story would have been better if you had no pants on. <laughs> yeah, exactly. All right. And, and what part. I told him, <laughs> what I told him was, I was like, okay, ladies and gentlemen, as you can see, I'm not appropriately dressed tonight, am I? And the whole room laughed. But what I, the point that I was making was, it's not about me. It's about this opportunity that you're about to see. And that night, I know uh, out of 15 people, I closed 12, and then I got two customers. I remember wow. that story. But I'm telling it to the listeners today, is when you think you don't have a story, you have a story. Tell the CTFO story because that's the most powerful story. And your personal story will come because just like Janet said, she already had a feeling for CBD. She had a need for it. And ladies and gentlemen, you're going to come in contact with people in your daily life that can benefit from this great product that we have. And you're here as a pioneer. So get good at telling the CTFO story. Get good at telling the CBD story. And by default, you will create your own personal story and your business will grow as well as your income. Does that make sense, Janet? Yes. And you bring to light something else that I don't want to just let be slighted away. It's your champion spirit. It's your, I will not be denied. Um, that kind of thing will make all of us winners here. I, I am like that myself. I am stubborn. You cannot deny me that which I want. And at first, Todd, the thing that compelled me to succeed here as a high school graduate who cheated to get my certificate, I always laugh and say I majored in voice. Oh, my God, you could just reflect on my life and know that didn't change for very early on. But it was, it was that spirit inside of me. First for my children, I had two daughters when I started network marketing that I loved more than myself. They were my reason why. I got tired of telling Rachel and Rebecca why we need to be grateful that we're just above broke, that we're not starving on the street. We have clothes on our body. We had, an, <laughs> we had a car that they made me park down the street them off at school and when we would pull away and we would be at stoplights they would duck I wanted to do it myself I was a little ashamed to be in the car myself but I thought God must just want me to be even humbled a little bit more but my point here is I love these girls so much I stopped making excuses for why we didn't have stuff and I said you know what I love you with all my heart you deserve the best I'll do whatever it takes to give you the best and they were my reason and somewhere along the line in getting beat up in this industry and with my bad personal choices I learned to love myself not always <laughs> as you know Todd but more times than that so anyway it's that champion spirit I love in you Todd Dalton and I hope everybody on here wakes that up and hang around people who remind you you're a champion I got my bestie on here Kathy, we, we lift each other up, prop each other up, tell each other how beautiful, capable, and lovable we are every opportunity we get. So do that for each other, guys. All right, give us another question, Todd. Absolutely. Well, I, I think that this is um, the perfect segue into um, as we wrap up here today. Um, well, I do have one question here. Uh, another person came in and said, how do you – oh, wow, this is a great question. How do you manage – all the personalities when your team gets to a certain size? How do you manage people? Um, oh, you know, I, I guess um, part of the gift of, of having um, made such bad personal choices is that um, my, um, I learned to embrace and accept people. Uh, as I would need to be accepted myself, right? I already exposed to you guys how completely imperfect I am. So I, um, I'm fascinated by people and I love people of all kinds. And um, I end up actually having the most struggles with people who are just like me, if you could imagine. <laughs> but I love, I do love people and I believe the best in people. And um, that doesn't always work to my advantage, but most of the time it does. So I love people who um, have um, different personality traits than I do. And I ask them if they have things that they're struggling with, um, I don't get down in the mud and commiserate with them. I do not think network marketing is the place where we bring our worst selves and, and, cry out the, the victim battle cry and expect other people to be tolerant of us. No, this place is a place where we get the opportunity to heal and grow and get past ourselves and then recognize the gift we have in our recovery and our moving forward. And then the calling is help others. That's what I see 
this industry is all about. So if people are shy or, um, uh, or they're self-loathing or they're um, very smart and very educated, but they're not very articulate, I ask these people, what part of those challenges do you want me to assist you in getting over? And then if you don't want to get over those, those things are important that you bring to your business somewhere. So if it's not you that possesses those, you need to recruit that. So if you're not comfortable front of the room or on camera, if you're a back office type kind of manager, you need to recruit those other skill sets that you don't have. And certainly along the way, just let yourself be enough. Absolutely. And that, that is a perfect segue into what we want to talk about here in closing. And I think what you just now hit the nail on is being a leader. And so could you tell everyone on the line today the importance of being a leader, a mentor, and what we have here for our team specifically? Right. I don't want you guys always to come to this well and think that Todd and myself and Klaus are the leaders. That That is just not true. We're the first ones to kind of break out and break away and start creating um, a path of success for you. But oh my goodness, uh, we're seeing people pick up and, and declare themselves as leaders too. I had no reason when I started network marketing to declare myself as a leader um, uh, on what measurement, right? Like uh, on what things that I'd done to ever um, announce myself as a leader and who would want to follow me, right? But I had made a different decision and I let my daily disciplines reflect that new decision and then... Um, my results started catching up with me and informing the world. So when you declare yourself as a leader, people will follow you. And the neat thing is you have to keep going the next step and the next step and the next step. Um, so uh, the idea is you have to declare yourself a leader, surround yourself with people who support you in that leadership role, and then walk that walk, as Perry had said a couple weeks ago. And on that note, Todd, this will be a great time to share with you that yesterday I had a great follow-up call with uh, Nikki Keoho who is the CEO of the Direct uh, World uh, Selling Alliance. And she has asked me if I would like to do an online leadership uh, seminar. It's a three-part webinar beginning October 2nd, then 9th, and finally the 16th on leadership. And she's going to address the five elements of leadership that include trust, authenticity, um, integrity, respect, and service. So the cost of that webinar is $59. You guys know where to find me if you'd like to uh, sign up for that. Certainly, I'm going to be on that. When I hear how Nikki learns to ask those right questions and to be relatable and to help people um, see themselves and their potential and move into um, their, uh, their ultimate capabilities, I'm all about it. So if you're interested in that, that's when we've lined it out. It'll be at 630 Pacific. Um, so let me know if you'd like to be included on that. Todd, do we have any last minute wrap up so we make sure everybody's needs are met this morning? Um, I'm going through here. And I think that we, we took care of it. I, I do have one last one, and this will be the last one, ladies and gentlemen. But um, we had an anonymous question, and it was, how do we get people to move forward once they have been exposed to the CTFO opportunity? And um, I, I guess I'll go first there, Janet. I think the way that you paint the picture here at CTFO and get someone to move forward is, is tell your story on how you got started. Meaning uh, that leadership that Janet just got done talking about, you need to lead by example, be a product of the product. So when you are bringing people in, you automatically have your own personal story to let them know, say, hey, Sally, this is what I did when I got started. And it goes beyond, ladies and gentlemen, just getting on your product and getting on auto ship. That means that you get into your back office and you learn some things about your business. You learn how to set up, you know, you learn how to set your auto ship up. You learn about the actual conference call schedule and things of that nature. So when you do have a conversation with your new person that just came in, you have things to talk about and it's not a cold turkey conversation. Mm -hmm. And when you do that, ladies and gentlemen, they will know to say, okay, this person is involved, they're engaged, and they can at least steer me in the right direction. If you're a, a brand new person, at least have that posture to let the new person know, say, okay, I've got confidence to help you, but then lean on your upline. You know, you have people that will help you, and collectively, that's how you get people in. The last thing I want to say is, is that 
don't ever think that you have to drag someone to CTFO. Because if you drag them to, you're going to have to drag them through. And mm -hmm. I always like to tell my team that you can't give the wrong presentation to the right person. When this opportunity hits the right ears and the right eyes, trust me, ladies and gentlemen, they will do it. You won't have to tell them to get on calls. You won't have to tell them to get engaged. They will just have that it factor. And so would you just get good at planting seeds? So to the person that asked that question, just keep doing what you're doing, exposing and exposing people to the CTFO opportunity. And when it hits the right person, they will do it. So I'll pass it on to you, Janet, with that. And then oh, that those are all great, Todd. And I would add to that that um, one of the Achilles heels of women is that we tend to want people to be successful more than they want to be themselves. And we concentrate our energies and focus on fixing people. Um, people who are destitute or um, who really need their break and stuff, where that's all well and good if that person's willing to help themselves. But here's one of the hard things I had to learn. If I want that person to be successful and I'm willing to do more for them than they are themselves, I need to move on. Because when you're focusing on that person who in their growth curve isn't there yet, they're just not ready to get over themselves, um, then you're denying or pulling away from the people who say, pick me. So there's only so much of you go around. So go to those people who raise their hand and say, pick me, and then get to know them. Men, you have to be relational. That means you have to listen to a girl tell you who she is and what's important to her because you're going to learn what motivates her, what makes her afraid. And then you ask them as, as part of that um, information gathering process, who do you know? Where are you comfortable? This makes me think of wonderful Faye in Canada, not quite in, in uh, her element in, in many areas of this business until you fillet this gal and give her an opportunity to tell you about French Bulldogs or English Bulldogs. Sorry, Miss Faye, I don't remember. They're cute as anything, whatever they are. But you get her on that subject. She's in her power. She's in her element. She gets creative. She feels unstoppable, confident, competent. We need to find those buttons in everybody. What floats your boat? Where are you confident? What kind of people are in your center of influence? Let's start there. And this is not a one shoe fits all. This is, um, this. you really have to be relational. This is where I tell you women, your Achilles heel is, you'll focus on fixing people. Don't do it. Um, but your, your strength and your advantages, you're very good at being in relationship. And you know, and you're willing to do what it takes uh, to engage people, to know them, to grow them. And then my final thing in closing, guys, is that I want to share with you that one of the things that we wrote about in guerrilla marketing when we were talking about my story was my willingness to do it wrong until I learned to do it exactly right. If you think this is any different than any business where you're going to start out and be a little awkward, a little clumsy, you're going to say something and you're going to realize that that rolled off well, it sounded well, it was received well. I think I'll do that again. That is part of the learning curve here. Let yourself do it a little wrong until you learn to do it exactly right. I thank you all for honoring uh, Todd and I and Klaus with your presence today. Uh, I love all of you. You're all important to me. Reach out to me and let me know how I can help you. I wish you all a blessed Saturday. God bless.